Well, here is a very simple thought question, just something to think about. The diagram that you see here shows a ball sitting at the top of a valley. Imagine you were to let the ball roll over the edge of the valley. What do you think would happen to the ball when it rolled down into the valley? Would it just roll down to the bottom and stop? Or would it roll down the valley, across the bottom, up the other side, and stop over here at the same height where it originated over here? Or perhaps you might think that the ball would roll down the valley and come almost up to the top and then roll back down again and eventually stop at the bottom of the valley. What do you think is going to happen when you let this ball roll down into the valley? Let me show you what would happen. We're going to let the ball roll down into the valley. Watch what happens. Now, I'm pretty sure that's probably what most of you said. You would say that the ball would roll down into the valley, it would not go up to its original height, and then it would roll back down again, and it wouldn't go up to the original height over here, and the height at which it would roll would keep decreasing until finally it stopped at the bottom of the valley. Now, that's obviously what most people would say. And then I could ask you this question. Why do you suppose the ball never went up to its original height over here on the other side of the valley? Why did the ball continuously decrease in the height to which it rolled and eventually stopped at the bottom of the valley? Why did the ball eventually stop? And most people, I'm sure, would simply say it's because of friction. Friction between the ball and the side of the valley. And also maybe air resistance. You know, as the ball picks up velocity, air resistance increases. The ball has to overcome air resistance and eventually it keeps the ball from moving higher and eventually the ball stops. Well, that's exactly what happens in the real world. So let's look at another situation. Here's a situation where we've taken the valley and we've taken one side of the valley and simply laid it out so it represents a wide flat surface, a flat plane. If you let this ball roll down onto the flat plane, you would expect that the velocity of the ball would increase as it rolled down the side of the valley. Its highest velocity would be right here at the edge of this flat plane. And you would expect that the ball would roll out across this flat plane and eventually somewhere over here it would stop. Why would it stop? Well most people would say that it would stop because of friction and air resistance. And friction and air resistance by the way are two forces that act on the ball when you let it roll down the hill. So why does the ball come to a stop out here? Well it comes to a stop like you said because of the forces that act on it, the friction and the air resistance. So the question now becomes this, what if we took away the friction and we took away the air resistance? No friction, no air resistance, and we let the ball roll down the hill. What would happen to the ball when it reached the bottom of the hill? Would it roll out here and stop? Well, we said that it was stopped because of the friction and the air resistance. So if we took away the friction and we took away the air resistance, what would happen? Well, you would expect the ball, once it reached the bottom of the hill, to continue moving across this flat plane at a constant velocity. And you would expect it never to stop. You would expect it to continue forever at a constant velocity. And that's exactly what Isaac Newton said when he published his Three Laws of Motion on July 5th, 1687. That's what he said. He said if you take away all outside forces, if you take away the friction, if you take away air resistance, take away all outside forces, then the velocity of the ball would be constant forever. That is what Isaac Newton said. He said, in the absence of any outside force, an object will continue doing what it's doing 
forever. If it's moving with a velocity, it will continue moving with that velocity forever. Well, that sort of sounds like magic. I mean, where would you ever be able to find a place where there's no friction, no forces at all acting on an object? Well, it just so happens there is a place. How about outer space? Asteroids, meteorites, rocks that move through outer space can actually continue moving forever at a constant velocity. That means not speeding up, not slowing down, not changing directions. As long as they are far enough away from any other celestial body, stars, planets, whatever, that would apply a gravitational force to it, then these objects can actually move because there's no air and certainly no friction. They can move at a constant velocity forever, just like Isaac Newton said. And Newton actually had a name for this idea. He called it his first law of motion. And that first law of motion says an object, a mass, something, anything at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will continue in motion at a constant velocity forever unless it's acted upon by a net force greater than zero. In other words, if you look at this wagon, if you take away the friction between the tires and the ground, if you take away the air resistance, take away all of the forces, all of the outside forces acting on this wagon, then if it's moving with a velocity of three meters per second, it will continue moving with that velocity forever until some force acts on it to stop it or to change its motion. In other words, the cart can continue moving at a constant velocity forever with no force to keep it moving. That is Newton's first law of motion. An object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will continue in motion at constant velocity forever unless it's acted upon by a net force greater than zero. Newton's law is also sometimes referred to as the law of inertia. And if we look at Newton's first law, we can see why it's called the law of inertia. It first of all says, an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will continue in motion at constant velocity forever. What that is really saying is that the natural state of any object such as the cart that you see here, the wagon, is to just keep doing what it is doing. If it is at rest, that means stationary, not moving, it'll stay at rest. It'll stay there, still not moving. And yet, if it is moving with any velocity, such as 3 meters per second, it will continue moving with that velocity forever. It takes a force to make it change its motion. In other words, objects resist any change in motion. They will try to continue doing what they're doing. And that is inertia. Inertia. Objects, masses, resist any change in motion. That is inertia. That is Newton's first law. What it really says is that it takes a net force greater than zero to cause anything to accelerate. That change in motion means acceleration. So in order for something to accelerate, a force is needed. Remember acceleration is to speed up, to slow down, to change direction. Any one of those things happens, it requires a force. It can't happen by itself without a force. Inertia means objects resist a change in motion and it takes a force to cause that change.